Thank you for attending this webinar sponsored by NEC Corporation. To learn more about the Programmable Flow Networking Suite featured in these use cases, please contact your NEC account rep today or go to NEC Corporation of America's website at www.necam.com sdn. To find additional SDN, OpenFlow, and Network Function Virtualization resources, visit ipspace.net slash sdn. You know that in traditional networks, you have all sorts of monitoring mechanisms. You can collect traffic statistics with interface counters. Maybe you have SNMP counters on individual interfaces. If that's not good enough, then you can start collecting NetFlow records, or you can use SFlow for sampled statistics. And you know that these things are always either too coarse or too detailed. In multi-tenant environments, we always have the problems of how do I show a tenant only the statistics that apply to his particular environment or his particular host or endpoints. The other problem is the endpoint and path visibility. You know how traditional IP routing works. The first switch would have ARP entry for A, and it would have the MAC address of A. And the second switch would only have an IP route, which would be, let's say, a slash 24, or it's an IPv6, it would be a slash 64. And here you would have another slash 24 or slash 64 entry. And here you would have a slash 24 entry for A, and you would have MAC and ARP entry for B. So it's really hard to get this information and summarize it into something that would be searchable. The information is all across the whole data center. And if you try to identify where something is, you have to log into numerous devices and extract that information. I'm positive that anyone who has ever done any network troubleshooting can relate to what I've been discussing right now. In any controller-based network, and this is regardless of whether it's OpenFlow-based or not, you would hope that the solution is implemented in a way where the controller is totally authoritative source of information. So regardless of whether you're using OpenFlow or whether you're using BGP SDN or whether you're using whatever, you would expect the controller to know the network configuration, the topology, the paths, and the endpoints. So if you only implement this, if you only implement a controller that can collect all that information and present it to you, you would have already done a great job. This is supposed to be the job of network management tools, and we all know that they are not doing a particular good job at that. So let's hope that the controllers that are emerging now will do a better job. Speaking about the controllers, if you go through the programmable flow webinar that we did in February, you will notice that you can get all this information from the programmable flow controller. And it's very easy to understand why that's the case because it's an open flow based solution. The controller must have all that information or it wouldn't be able to program the switches. There is no way around that. Now, there's another goodie we get in open flow based networks, namely, in OpenFlow, every single OpenFlow entry that is installed in the switches also gets, by definition, byte and packet counters. Now the controller, through OpenFlow, not through SNMP, can read those flow statistics, and if a flow ever expires, then the switch automatically sends the last statistics to the controller. So using OpenFlow, you can configure, or the controller can configure, the collection of statistics at any granularity. You can collect, for example, everything on port 80, 
or you can collect statistics per MAC address, or you can collect statistics for individual IP address if you want to bill your users for the data they generate, which is interesting for mobile networks, for example. You can do anything you wish. The only thing that needs to be done is the controller has to download the proper forwarding entries into the switches, and the switches must first support the number of entries you need, and support the counters on the flow forwarding entries. I mentioned multi-tenancy before, so the question was, does OpenFlow have built-in support for tenancy, or is this a higher level function of the controller? This is definitely a higher level function of the controller. In NEC's case, as I said, they implement virtual tenant networks, so that's there by default. There are some other solutions like, for example, Flowvisor, which slices a physical switch into multiple open flow switches so that multiple controllers can control their parts of the switches. In case I have a generic flow entry, then the counters cannot help in identifying a specific traffic, say A to B. Absolutely right. The Counters will only show you statistics at the granularity that the controller has configured. If we are talking about identifying specific traffic, then you'll see later on when I go into denial of service use cases, for example, how we can use OpenFlow together with external tools to dynamically adjust the granularity and work with that. Is it possible to limit a query for stats to a specific flow space on a given switch? Not through the standard. You can do that in the controller. So if you have a controller like NEC's programmable flow that has the support for multi-tenant environment, then obviously you can limit what the tenants can see. If you use something like Flowvisor, where you split the switch into multiple independent virtual switches, then the Flowvisor will take care of that. Otherwise, there is nothing in the OpenFlow protocol itself that can help you get there. Are the features you refer to also available on OpenV switch? If so, is there an impact on the server? Everything I mentioned so far is available in OpenV switch, including the per flow or per forwarding entry statistics. And yes, they had interesting challenges with collecting those statistics because in the previous OVS versions, they were installing per flow entries into the kernel forwarding table and then had to summarize that into the flow forwarding entries in the user space. And now they modified that so that the flow entries in the kernel are more aligned with the flow entries in the user space. So yes, that does have an impact on the CPU on the server. And the OVS team is working really hard to reduce that impact. Interesting security question. I have some concerns from a security perspective that a single controller could effectively be used to bridge what may be traditional risk domain secured by firewalls. Is there an ability in OpenFlow to partition off administrative tasks so that no single person holds all the keys, so to speak? Well, you have to keep in mind that you had the same problem in traditional switches. So you were using VLANs, but if someone broke into your infrastructure and got access to your core link, VLANs didn't help you. And also, if someone broke into your switch, VLANs didn't help you because they could reconfigure the switch. So OpenFlow just moves the numerous weak points that an intruder could attack to a single set of weak points, which is the OpenFlow controllers. I don't think anything has really changed from the security perspective. You still have control plane. It has to be secured. And usually the vendors would use SSL, well, TLS to be precise, to secure that. Your core links still have to be secured or someone can inject whatever they wish onto your core links. 
and like your switches your controllers have to be secured so that you can only access them through the management network and the management network has to be secured so that outsiders cannot get to the management network. So I don't think anything has really changed. Samra, this might be for you. Does the NEC controller produce NetFlow statistics? If I have an existing NetFlow tool, can I use what NEC controller produces to fit my NetFlow collector, let's say? It does provide the SFlow statistics through the controller, which you can collect through your existing tools. To learn more about the award-winning NEC Programmable Flow Networking Suite, or the complete SDN ecosystem NEC is building with partners, and how you can customize these use cases for your own networking needs, call your NEC account rep today, or go to NEC Corporation of America's website at www.necam.com slash SDN. Thank you for your time and interest in NEC. Additional SDN, OpenFlow, and Network Function Virtualization webinars, recordings, and workshops, as well as other resources like books and case studies, are waiting for you at ipspace.net slash SDN.